Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Black Box, written by You're Sure I'm Not a Robot. The front of the ship shattered in the silence of space. The debris slamming into the ship's shields and burning until the fields themselves failed, and the wreckage was flung into chaos. The cascade of destruction continued, ripping backwards until it hit the bridge and extinguished all life on board. The carnage was flung into the darkness, almost certainly lost forever. Again, the explosions reached further back until they hit the vacuum-sealed cargo holds. The ship seemed to inhale as the hull began warping, and then it joined the hail of shattered metal, burning gas, torn bodies and twisted equipment hurled into the dark. The eerie silence that is death in space filled the screen. Bart paused the simulation and turned to Captain Balseth of the Tri-Cipher. That's the best I can do for now. My drones have scanned the 80% and loose wreckage and recovered maybe three. The rest I got from the Hulk sitting out there. The captain nodded as the screen returned to the twisted chunk of wreckage turning in space outside his ship. Engineer, you have answered many questions except the important one. Why did the ship explode? It is almost identical to most of our fleet, and we need to know how this happened. Bart enlarged the image. Captain, uh, that was the bridge. Everything we needed to know was in there, and all of it's gone. I can track the debris, track speeds, track rates of burning, tensile strength, track the uh, organic remains. But nothing here will tell me what the crew were doing or why we were doing it. Unless you have a way of traveling in time, then all I can do is refine the simulation so that we can watch it die again. Aware that that sounded defeatist, he added. I can check the system, see how the explosion like that could have traveled through the craft, using your ship as a template. Perhaps that'll be enough. The captain seemed to sag, his scales flat and colorless, his crests waving listlessly. He looked again at the broken ship. Engineer, we haven't been entirely truthful with you. This is the third ship that we have lost. We didn't want to damage confidence in our technology if it was some simple accident of space. Some anomaly that we could explain. Now it seems that it could happen to any of us. This is why my government asked for your skills to be made available to us. You humans seem to avoid these kinds of events, and we need your insight. Bart was silent for a moment, looking around at all the familiar tech the dull realities of boring, ordinary ship travel. The dullness, treasured, bled for, fought for against all odds. Taking organic life into the cold, pitiless void so often that the price was forgotten. Some of the Xenos had been out here for thousands of years, treating it like a playground. Captain, uh, we don't avoid them. Our expansion into space, our future out here has been paid for in blood. From the moment we tried to fly into our home world, we have failed many, many times. We try to not repeat our mistakes, is all. Captain Paulseth seemed to take it badly. Your people are all over space. You charge us ridiculous amounts of wealth to maintain our ships. Are you telling me it's a lie? Bart shook his head. Captain, a decent engineer is cheaper than a new ship every time something goes wrong. What I mean is that if this was a human-built ship, I would have a lot more information. I'd be pulling out the black boxes and checking every decision the crew made for the last month. 
Every data stream from every system on board. Your ships don't have that, so I can only go on the wreckage after the event. What is this black box technology? Why do I not have it? How does it save your ships? I want it on my ship immediately! The captain was practically hissing at him by now. Bond put his hands up. Captain, I'll be happy to install it. I don't know why so few species are willing to use it, but it doesn't save your ship. With luck, it saves the next one. It records everything, and when something happens, its only job is to survive so that we can find out what went wrong. Then we analyze it and change our designs, or ground the ships, or find mistakes the crew made. Whichever applies. Mostly, it's a mix of all of them. But it doesn't save the ship. It's the voices of the dead, and we listen carefully. Borseth tried to work it out. It was an alien to his concept of the universe. You let ships die and then study the corpses. This is why so few Xenos had proper safety systems. Everything had always worked, so they always would. Until they didn't. Bart sighed. Captain, we treat our ships as a fleet. A failure in one is a risk to all. If something happens to one of us, we all need to know what happened. We don't like mysteries. Your ships sail around out here as if nothing can ever go wrong, just because mostly it doesn't. Now you have three dead ships and no information. The captain gave up. Just do it. Put whatever the system is on my ship. I'll contact my government and issue my recommendations to fit it to all of our ships. I'll need you to testify on this before we lose any more crew to this, uh, problem. The XCC issued a charitable appeal with a large cash bonus attached to fit the black boxes onto the 200 ships of similar design. Bart finished his simulations and passed them back to Intel, but nothing useful was found. Now, it was only a question of when something else went wrong. A morbid waiting that set the Xeno fleet on edge. Many more minor mistakes were being made as the crews tried to accept that the strange human technology that would probably be the only thing that survived their destruction. Bart has been back on the Ishmael for three weeks, waiting for the call that he knew was coming. Every ship had been wired up in a hurry really basic stuff. If it worked, well, maybe the Xenos would see the point to invest properly. XCC was grinning like a fecking child over the prospect, regardless of the death toll. He was used to the cynicism that sat quietly behind many of humanity's good works, but this felt a little darker than most. The call came. Engineer to bridge, bring a bag. It took some time to reach the Tri-Cypher and reunite with Captain Borseth. The atmosphere was grim as it trailed another wreck, another sister ship lost to these mysterious accidents. The captain put out a limb and welcomed the engineer back. Thank you, Bart. Uh, Your captain tells me you've been kept busy. I wanted you because you've seen this before. From your previous work, I can tell that this is exactly the same issue. I have tracked the debris, and it matches all the same criteria. We are waiting for you to recover the human technology and find out what happened. A little later, they were back in engineering. Captain, what was she called? He asked as they looked at the scans. The captain looked grim. She was the sense secret. I knew its captain and crew well. Solid, careful, and experienced. Nothing like this could have happened slowly. It must have been quick. They didn't even send out a distress call. One of your devices alerted us. The engineer nodded. He had set vacuum alert beacons on some of the places that had taken early damage, hoping it might get help faster. At least, it had helped the recovery. He looked closely at the spinning hulk. I'll suit up and see what I can find. Hopefully, it won't take long. It took a long week 
a week of cutting, bending, and burning. The black boxes were set in three places on the ship and buried deep and strong. He didn't want to start any kind of analysis without all of them, or at least most of them. Bart wasn't too happy about all the sweating, heavy work. He preferred drones or other people to do the heavy lifting. Pointless on this project. So many variables made programming useless, and he'd spend longer shouting and explaining to his Xena crew. Anyway, they were all pretty emotional about the ship, and he was aware that this was a graveyard for them. Having a human doing it seemed to be helping them in some strange way. Finally, he pried the black box from the bridge shop structure. Captain, I have it. Coming on board now. He looked at the burned metal and the torn fabric now open to space. He bowed his head. All right, boys. I'll take it from here. I'll make a damn sure that it doesn't happen again. He didn't believe in ghosts, but he was never quite sure that they cared about what he believed. They aren't black, was the first remark from the captain. Bart grinned briefly. Hi, Captain. Imagine chasing a black object in space, or rather, a lot of burning. They are as bright as we can make them. The paint took generations to develop. Black boxes are very old technology for us, and the name stuck. It sounds better than luminous orange boxes, anyway. It doesn't burn, sheds dirt, and is visible on every spectrum that we use. The captain moved to touch one of them, hesitated, and withdrew his talons. Come to my quarters when you have news. Good luck. Bart eventually had to seal the door to engineering. Too many Xenos coming to look at the mysterious tech now buried in their ships. Holders of dark secrets. He didn't need the distraction. He wired all the boxes up and began downloading the data, running it directly into its existing intel. The dead ship began telling him its story. Over and over he ran the records. The crew was without fault as far as he could tell. No odd orders, no experimental procedures. Solid, unimaginative Xenos. The best kind of crew for this data. Finally, he found a small anomaly. Nothing apparently dangerous, just one that seemed to escalate until the final explosion. He tried to match it against other lost ships and, uh, as far as he could see, it was consistent. All he really had to go on was a gut feeding and an increase in parts ordered. It was going to take hours to rerun the simulations to find out. There was never enough data, but he needed to talk to the captain. He found the captain playing with some strange creature, a sort of bat-like furry thing about two hands high. He stopped and the animal flew onto the perch peacefully. Captain? Hello, Bart. Uh, we heard all about your canine alliance and thought that we would try it ourselves. We call them Numenias. We bred them in caves a long time ago as bug hunters. They increase morale on the long trips, the captain paused. And on days like this, what have you found? Bart couldn't resist walking over to the creature and peering at it. Is it a predator? Can it talk? The creature's tiny eyes studied him and then went, yip. The captain laughed. Not unless you're a bug. It's not much for talking, but it lets you know if it's unhappy. Bart nodded again. So like our cats. He dismissed the creature and brought up his scan. I have questions. He put his intel onto the screen, focusing on a small data point. Captain, why were they buying so many light bulbs? The captain looked quizzical. What is a light bulb? The engineer pointed at the order data. Light bulbs are just what we call light fittings. They are practically immortal and have been for generations. So why are your ships buying so many? And why was it escalating? Right up until the end where they were raising them in mass. The captain remembered something and pulled up his own records. We've been having similar issues. I've needed to replace several conduits. Nothing important. Not even engineering. Any of the crew can pull out those circuits and put into recycling and just pick up a new one from Cargo Bay. 
We carry a few hundred that usually last a lifetime of the ship. Okay, so uh, what we have is spreading circuit failure on your ships, apparently including this one. Leave that with me and I'll get back to you. He saw concern on the captain's face. Don't worry, I won't be long. I'm just going to map out the circuits. I've never heard of lightning doing any damage. It's a low power system, certainly not powerful enough to blow up a ship. I just need more data. Several hours later, and Bart had tracked everything marked on his scans as 3E. The boxes told him that the heavily used corridors and rooms fell first, then the crew quarters, and finally the storage and cargo. It was a map of crew activity, each one leading to a break in the circuit. Some of the circuits had just been replaced, some upgraded by replacing the break with more powerful versions. He sniffed at that. No attempt to solve the issue had been made. The only place not reporting changes was the far end of the ship. Round zero for the explosion. No foot traffic, no changes in the lighting. This was a dead end. He went back to the captain. Sir, the lighting doesn't seem to play an important role. I'm still consolidating the data. You said you knew the wrecked ship. Had anything new been introduced onto the ship? Some new equipment, crew, anything. From the corner came a quiet yip. Bart frowned. Sir, when did you start introducing your pets on ships? Tell me about them. Captain Bolseth made a warbling sound as the creature leapt from its perch and flew to his shoulder, his wing flashing brightly. Bart raised his eyes in surprise. Sir, does that thing take batteries? The captain just petted the creature. No, Bart. It's how they hunt. Well, how they hunted. The light draws in and confuses insects on our home world, and they eat them. They also groom the likes of us, when they can be bothered. Now we keep them because they are pretty, and they keep us because we feed them. This time, Bart laughed. I'm familiar with the dynamic. There is a lot of discussion about bringing our cats into space. The smile faded. Although I'm not too sure the two species should meet. Imagine the diplomat trying to sort out the literal cat fight. Or the smug house mocky eating the captain's pet. He was intrigued though. So how do they generate the light? And how do they store it? The captain shrugged. Some bioluminescent bacteria they evolved within the caves. They get heat and some weird sugars from the wings. And then the bugs excrete light when the Numenio flaps its wings. Why? The answer hit Bart with a certainty that he could not deny. You take bacteria into space for the first time, it thinks it's heaven. Lots of warm spaces, lots of mutations. Oh, look, here's a nice sunny spot I've discovered and I can eat wiring. Perfect. I multiply until someone wants me to light up. So I do and fry the wiring. That's fine, there's plenty more, and anyway, someone will be along shortly to replace it. And here's the spot where no one ever wants me to light up, so I just grow and grow. Then there's a trigger. Something tells me to light up, and I do. Crap! Captain, I need you to get the men into the life pods, and let me cut the power immediately. What happened out there is happening here, and I don't know how long we have. Don't hit the emergency lights. Just come and tell everyone to walk slowly to the light pods and be ready for release. When Captain Balseth had looked for a human engineer, he'd been told that there might be a time when you just shut up and listen. Some captains said that that was true with any humans, but if you saw a human engineer running, you just ran with them. He stared at Bart. Permission granted. You can explain later. He picked up the comms and began making a call he, like every other captain ever, dreaded. All crew, abandon ship. All crew, abandon ship. Move softly to the life pods and prepare for release. Move it, people. This is not a drill. He could see the engineer trying to run carefully back to his department. It would have been funny, except for what it told him about their situation. Bart ran as softly as he could, aware that any sudden signal could trigger a catastrophe. 
He reached engineering and began hitting the close down on every system and ran to his own life pod. He calmed the captain. Sir, I'm in the pod. Call it when you can. The pods fell away, taking the crew into clear space. Unfortunately, that resonated across the ship, triggering the thick layer of bacteria that had been growing throughout the hull. Thousands, millions of years of evolution told it now was the time. The captain watched his ship disintegrate in front of him. It was less exciting than the engineer's simulations, but it played out the same. The front of the ship exploded and the lines of fire ripped through the hull, crushing the ship. This time, there were no bodies. The bridge ripped apart, but then the fire started to die down. The engineer's actions to kill the power had prevented much of the dramatic destruction, but he could see that the ship would never fly again. Many hours of waiting around, then an unremarkable rescue and several hours of reports and warnings had kept Bart and the captain busy. Every ship in the fleet was busy evacuating and filling the hulls with antibacterial compounds. Everyone was grounded, required to land on a quarantine orbital and subjected to decontamination. All pets were now banned until further research was completed. After some rank and attitude demands, the captain and the engineer were currently quarantined in the bar. The captain nodded as the engineer sat down. Chief, thanks for saving my crew. I imagine the XCC had a lot to say. The engineer picked up a glass and drank with gratitude. I, I never show up. There is an emergency program to check our own ships and a thousand more looking for the black box system to still be fitted. He refilled his glass and raised it to the captain. You saved more than your crew today. You might be saving your people for generations to come. I'm glad you called me. Bart dragged his bag back through to the Ishmael, nodding to the crew as he went. The captain was waiting for him at the door to engineering. Bart, uh, I hear you're a rich man now. Uh, another new industry for us. Well, uh, for you anyway. Good to have you back. Uh, I was afraid you'd arrive in a pleasure ship, surrounded by uh, nubile young Zenos. Bart sniffed, something in his Scottish soul deeply offended. Captain, I'm not looking for such things. I may have bought a few special bottles with me, if you're interested in a dram or two. Well, Chief, how could I say no to that? What was the problem anyway? Bart sniffed. Ugh, just bugs. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.